let's get into this episode with Daniel. So sitting down with Daniel from Chart Champions, uh, I wasn't super, you know, keyed into what you were doing. I actually put out a thread recently that said, you know, if you want to hear from anyone on the episode or on the show and you want me to do an episode with them, you know, tag them below or harass them or something like that. Um, just kind of jokingly, and I actually got a bunch of solid leads. Um, so before we get into this episode, your trading strategy, and really start looking at the charts, do you think you could just give us a little bit of background on yourself, what you were doing before you started trading crypto, that sort of thing? Yeah, so uh, hello everybody, nice to meet and speak to some of you all. Um, yeah, so obviously I got introduced to, to Charles's podcast via a uh, uh, follower of mine who commented asking me to appear on this um so thank you for the opportunity to speak to you all today and yeah Thanks so my, my name is daniel us, really <laughs> no it's, it. it's a pleasure um yeah so so my name's daniel and i got into i originally started trading back, coming on 10 years ago now so i've been trading fully for about nine years and then so about 10 nine years i've been trading in the in the game of this space but i only moved on to cryptocurrency um around the around the 20k highs I, I was always around uh prior to this in the stock market predominantly in the stock market traded a little bit of forex but i never really never really fell in love with forex um but yeah the stock market was was my main game for for the majority of my career and then everybody really knows me from the cryptocurrency space that's kind of where i got a name and um i put that was that was predominantly from uh yeah really around that, that december high of around 20k uh, i i was following bitcoin on its lead up so i was not actually longing bitcoin during the 2017 rise but the way that i got introduced to it is because i was a um a big fan of nvidia and so i was long on nvidia during i've been long on nvidia for a long time and nvidia started to run really really hard in 2017 and this was obviously linked to bitcoin they uh, Obviously, um, all the miners, I suppose. I, I'm not a fundamental guy. I'll just put it out there. So I'm, I'm like far from fundamentals. I only ever do technical analysis. But um, obviously, there's NVIDIA was running hard because they do the um, graphics cards that are in a lot of miners, I think. No, and you're so, spot on there. Yeah. <laughs> so NVIDIA was like running really, really hard. And obviously, it was, it was making quite unusual kind of gains. You know, these were like 100%, you know, it was running real hard. And for a stock, it's not that usual. And so I was like, you know, trying to you know, work out why it was running so hard. And then it was obviously all because of Bitcoin. And then that's kind of what brought me into the, into the cryptocurrency space uh, originally. There we and, go. Yeah, so it was it was a cool it was a cool time to join, but because I had the background in the stock market, I I could recognise that this was also uh, really uh, open, like massively overextended. So, um, you know, I, I I didn't jump in. My first ever trade, for example, on on, on Bitcoin was short because I I recognised it was obviously I didn't know it was going to turn around at 20k or any, anything like this. But once it had its original rejection at 20k, um, I'll show you on the screen. So once it had its original rejection from 20k. He obviously, you, you know, you know, dropped drop down to, you know, dropped drop nearly 50% pretty, pretty quickly. And so the, when I got interested in shorting, it was off of its first rebound. So I was shorting it from around a 16, 17K highs. And this was really, really, really simple for me. Uh, pe people that follow me know I'm a big fan of Fibonacci. And this one was really simply, I, I love it on this sort of, um, between the 618 and the 66 is for me is like a really interesting uh, Fibonacci confluence region. And this one was, you really simply came up into this high pocket or which was previous like resist, like simply, I have a big strategy off of horizontals and Fibonacci, order flow and time. So th those are like my main basis of trading. So um, really simply a lot of people overcomplicate trading in my opinion you know there's so there's like massive rabbit holes that you can go down but really 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 simply and it, and it might sound a bit silly but support and resistance just really simply horizontal levels they're so so simple but they're so effective and i think i think people that are you know they'll come into trading they'll, they'll start learning about support resistance and then they'll go down the rabbit hole and, and i'm not saying that it's not beneficial to also know other things but th th they're like just fundamentals you need to know you know they're, they're just so easy but so effective and so this was really simply an old level of like resistance resistance broken through that offered no support on the way back down so the way that you can kind of view this is is when there was an old resistance that offers 
little to no support when broken. When it kind of back tests, you get these things known as confluence in trading. So when you get several different technical tools lining together, and this is why you never really want to just trade off of only Elliott waves, only Fibonacci, only order flow, only horizontals. You, you want to try and build a case to um, have as many technical tools as possible in your favor. And the, the more tools that you have lining up together, you have a higher, higher level of confluence. And that would just obviously increase your probabilities because that's all we trade is probabilities. So when you see it coming, this was a high volume level as well as a horizontal level, as well as in like this 618 Fibonacci level, which is it's just outstanding. <laughs> it's, 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 it's outstanding how often it works. Um, so this was where I got interested in and, you know, took my first trades on Bitcoin was from the 17 K high. And then from there, um, well, yeah, the rest is history, I suppose. Obviously, <laughs> it obviously <laughs> fell down pretty hard. But um, yeah, once you get into yeah. it, you, there's no stopping, in my opinion. No, it's, but, it's, 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 yeah, it's like a drug, I think, for me now. Tra trading, it just can't, can't stop. So many, so many <laughs> traders that I've talked to have said the exact same thing. You know, yeah, not only is. are you making money and losing money, but the dopamine rush that comes with mm -hmm. it is pretty wild. And that's what keeps yeah. a lot of people around. But before we get into kind of your actual trading strategy, how you've progressed over the last couple of years. I do yeah. just want to go back. You know, the, the yeah, reason absolutely. I ask, no, no, you're good. The reason I ask about the um, kind of background on my guests is I kind of just want to prep my audience and prep myself for, you know, the experience you've had up until now kind of yeah. gives you some sort of credibility. <clears throat> uh, so you'd been trading, you know, stocks. You got, you did a little bit of Forex trading, but you said it wasn't for you. Um, you know, it's funny that yeah, most ser serious traders that I talk to, they say yeah. they, they started trading Bitcoin around 2017, end of 2017. Uh, yeah. You know, the fundamental guys, they, they found Bitcoin, they bought it, they <laughs> held it. Yeah. A lot of the traders, it, it hit their radar when shit started going kind of crazy. Yeah. You know, we hit nearly 20K, it was on every news outlet, every financial news outlet, you know, you're hearing about Bitcoin, you're seeing about seeing, you know, articles written about Bitcoin. Uh, and so they're like, Oh, I could probably trade this. This seems very volatile. Uh, yep. you specifically, it was Nvidia, uh, which then led you to Bitcoin. And since then it's kind of, you know, been probably yeah. a long three years of just absolute <laughs> insanity, Time flies. right? Yeah. It, it's crazy to think that it's been, you know, three years or so or coming up on three years, I should say, since that yeah. last high. Um, so you mentioned a couple things. You mentioned order flow, you know, just support resistance levels, Fibonacci, some time stuff. Uh, do you think you could just give us a high level overview? Because, you know, you mentioned all of those, but can you give us like a high level overview of yeah. what time frames you're <clears throat> trading, what you're using to trade, how it's progressed over the last three years, if at all? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, I mean, I'm I'm predominantly a a scalp trader. Um, so this this means I'm I'm generally trading on time frames such as anywhere from like the one minute charts to to five one to five minute charts. So I I really enjoy day trading. So this this is also a fa a factor for me because I have no interest in fundamentals. You know, I, I literally couldn't care less about them. And this this for me plays into being a scalp trader you know when, when you're down on the one minute chart you know once when, when you're looking at the order book when you're looking at volume coming in and out of the books you know when you've got your like fibonacci level set up that you know this obviously then has zero impact on any fundamental news so i mean i predominantly trade these these yeah small small time frames but everything that i sort of do so all the tools that i use also can be used in the exact same methods for example swing traders that that trade the four hour the, the one day the, the one week the one month time frames and so i do have like a mixture uh bitcoin is is the main thing that i trade and i will trade this swing trades as well as um scope trading at the same time and then my altcoins are generally more swing trades so i'm not such of a fan really of of uh, scope trading the altcoins anymore and and this is more for time time restriction i don't have the time so much but um yeah bitcoin i will swing trade day trade and scope trade so bitcoin i'll do everything on and so the, the main ways that i would be looking for trades is if we come down so I'm, I'm a big fan of like the one hour 15 minute charts so if i talk you through uh, what, what I've got going on here, and this kind of will give you an a, a introduction, so to speak, of, of like what I'm looking for when I'm trading. Um, so the first thing 
that probably stands out maybe is is the way that we look at the the channels let me just hide these other levels a second um so i like I, I really love to use channels when i'm trading and again channels are like i suppose when you look at support resistance so for example that monthly that we had here like this this level you can see how it's been resistance let me bring this time frame up you can see how this level has been resistance price goes into it rejects resistance rejects comes back up through the level through the level but then you get another touch of support 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 broken you know really resistance resistance broken back into support so these are really simple sr levels but they're, they're very powerful but then the channel is i would say is like a bit more of an upgraded version where then you are are holding price action by kind of like a region because because the thing that kind of gets people i think with with this for instance this one monthly level is uh, you know price is not always you know this is obviously giving us nine thousand three hundred thirty nine dollars and five cents but you can see it's very rare for anything to ever just go straight to the dollar to to project you see how it, like each of the levels are that there's obviously a slight move through the level move through move through so I, li I like channels because of the fact that it gives you this sort of breathing space so to speak where there's there's more of a region and the way that i like to then trade is because this is you know the four hour chart the way that i would then be trading this is down on time frames such as the five minute chart where we would be then going from trades such as this okay so just what we have at the top of the top of the channel where you're going through trades like this from the from the middle of the channel and then obviously you lose that channel it re retests it as resistance drop back down retest as resistance but then you break back through you go into the midpoint so i like to use channels for really simple support resistance lines um to be honest with you like just simple res support and resistance at the end of the day but they're, they're really powerful and i like to do them um there's a few ways that I would like to really look at them. And so you can see uh, the way that I originally done this channel, and this was the channel that I was trading. Um, the way that I do my channels is when I've when I've found a channel that works, I will keep it on my chart sort of forever and I, and I won't remove it because I, I feel that once a channel has been respected, price, this is a really nice example that this channel was really, really well respected. Okay, and then price moves out of the channel but then when price eventually comes back to it, it started being respected again as a support resistance level where you have the midpoint as a SR and then you have the bottom as sort of support, the top as resistance. So I would never remove a channel once it's moved away because I always feel it will come back into play. So when you, uh, but, when you say, sorry, really quick to interrupt, yeah, when no, you no, say no, that's forever, cool. do you really mean forever or do you kind of well, mean, totally move <laughs> away from that level? Because yeah. you, like I, I, I am very supportive of this because I know a lot of people that They'll drop their charts, they'll mark them up, and then they come back a couple days later and they've just completely erased everything, fresh new chart, they're looking for something yeah. new when in reality these channels that have been set up uh, or any kind of trend lines uh, that are set up are still being respected down the road. Yeah, so I mean, I, I would remove a channel, for instance, if it's if it is like, let's say like... like I, for me anyway maybe like a month old or, or we've we've totally moved out of that price action for example let's say we start trading above 11k then i i would remove these channels because for me um uh, i like to keep my charts clean or i just hide them like this for example i wouldn't keep them on my charts i wouldn't i was gonna say i'm not really seeing anything down at lower levels in the seven and six k's when you had your chart up no. so we've yeah, kind of so moved yeah, away I, I... from that price action yeah, and, okay. because of the yeah, because of the fact I'm like more of a small term time frame trader as well. Like I, I like to keep my charts as clean as possible because I am looking at a few different things all the time. Yeah, yeah it would get really messy if I wasn't using like these these ways. <laughs> well, so I, I, I just had I just had Ultra XBT on, uh, and I was looking at his charts, and some of them were giving me a headache. Uh, just because yeah. of how many trend lines <laughs> and levels he had up, yeah, and uh, he likes to keep things up from from months and months yeah, ago. Yeah, no, I never do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, it works for him, and I'm not trying to yeah. knock anyone else's trading strategy. I think Absolutely once you no. find something that kind of works for you, you run with it. And other people yeah. can be like, "This dude's crazy. Like, this is all bullshit." If you're able to trade it, run that. Doesn't matter what anyone else says. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's why I say it. <laughs> Uh, so, so really quick, you said, you know, when you try to find these channels, is this something that you're just, you know, looking at the chart, kind of seeing what has been respected, what kind of support and resistance levels, or is there anything more to it? Yeah. So for example, I'll show you how I done these two channels that I've got here. So this, this top channel really, really simply, uh, we have the high 
and you see how it's the one so i'm on the one hour chart here and it was the one hour close and so this was the one hour close which gave us our high around 10k more or less and then the first drop that you had this was the one hour close which then gave you your secondary rise. So once I had this one hour close and this one hour close, I had had my channel. And okay. what I like to do is, is verify that the actual midpoint of the channel is, is respected. And you can see here that the first move up actually hit the middle of the channel to the exact dollar. So then for me, that this is enough to say this channel is is respected here. And then obviously from here, you go to the low. You never quite make it to the high, but you know, again, like the exact dollars, is, it, this is obviously held down by the 10K psychological, if we're, if we're honest here. So you have the 10K psychological. It does, doesn't make it up to 10,040, but it's, 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 not, it's, not, it's not so important that it doesn't touch the top. We can see the, the rejections from around 10K psychological back down to around a midpoint region before coming back up for that lower high, back down to the lows, again, rejection from like the midpoint, back down to the lows, back down to the low again. And this is where you're kind of getting this uh you know just just this grinding price action on the bottom of the channel uh and then you, this is where you would integrate order flow uh type software into your analysis so for example if we're grinding back at the bottom of a channel uh, i i need to make a decision okay am i going to buy this bottom of the channel and expect a rotation back up to the high because i'm a trader that always would say trade a channel until it breaks uh too many people uh when you're range bound are always expecting breakouts. So for example, when you're coming up to the top, you get a lot of people thinking, right, this is the time it's gonna it's gonna go. And when you come down to the lows, they'll be thinking this is the time it's gonna go. And um, in my opinion, you're so much better trading it sideways until you actually see this thing break out. And so you have to always be thinking to yourself, if that's the case, the market is more likely to be range bound and it is trending. Okay, that that's that's a given then the next thing you have to decipher is okay now we've reached the bottom of the range am i going to buy this one to trade it back up to the highs or am i going to sit out so you always have three options in trading really you have the option of buying selling and, and sitting out and, and sitting out is a position so when it comes down to the low of the channel you can say to yourself okay i'm either going to sit out i'm going to wait for this low to be broke and then maybe i'll short or i'll buy the long of I'll, I'll, I'll long the bottom of the channel i would generally say that i would 90% of the time be long in the bottom, selling the top, long in the bottom, selling the top and until obviously it breaks. And then obviously I would take a loss if I, had, you know, I, I'll take losses if I obviously long the bottom of the channel and, and then it breaks. But what we can be doing to determine. So uh, or really quick us... before, because I, cause I oh, think yeah, we're yeah. headed towards, uh, you talked about some order flow software. And before we get into that, do you just want to yep. cover two quick things? Um, yep. One is that what I've noticed as you were kind of looking at these channels is you started on these higher time frames, started going down to the lower time frames, and as you Absolutely. can see, uh, you can you can see these highs, lows, and midpoints being respected more often. So a lot of people, when they say, "Oh, I want to trade the one minute," they they pull up the one minute chart immediately <laughs> and they just start yeah. drawing lines and going for it. Uh, but I think for I want my audience to understand is. You can start on these higher time frames and slowly work your way down. F f yeah. So, you, you know, you go to the 10, the 5, the 1 minute chart after these levels are on your chart. You can see that they're respected a lot more often. Yeah. So that's 100 percent right. So, for instance, you know, I'm, I'm day trading every day, but I, I would never, ever jump into a chart if I had zero analysis done on it and start trading the one minute. So I would always start with high term high time frame analysis that gives you your bias uh of the overall perspective so are you in an overall uptrend are you in an overall downtrend like the bigger picture is important to these so to speak the bigger trend is important to these one minute charts it's, it's good to have your levels marked out on a high term time frames and then so you always in my opinion you'd always start on like the monthly chart and work your way down to the down to the minute chart essentially um so i wouldn't ever just jump into a chart lines really and, and start trading the one minute there we go yeah i remember yeah. talking with trader main a while ago i don't know if you know him but uh he always starts yeah, I do know him, yeah he always starts around the monthly uh goes down to the weekly he's actually more of a swing trader i think the lowest he goes is four hour but he was saying pretty much the exact same thing of you know i start on the highest time frame possible and i work my way down when i'm kind of adding these levels to my chart uh yeah. So, sorry to interrupt you there. No, uh, that's kind. You then mentioned that you're you are always kind of looking for the channel to be respected. You're not one of the breakout traders who's always looking for that clean break into a hard run. You're saying I'm going to trade no. this thing until it breaks. 
yes. and then you mentioned the order flow software uh, kind of as we're reaching the bottom of this channel and it starts kind of grinding along the bottom this order flow software that you use can be helpful yeah. to see what's going on next so can we maybe get into that now yeah absolutely so I mean, one thing that I would say before I get into this on, on Bitcoin is, is many of you have probably heard, I, I met maybe, of the swing failure pattern. It's it's pretty well recognized now, I, I believe, whereas, you know, many people never even never heard of it. And now it's become really, really popular. But what, what essentially that is, is, is when you run the lows. OK, so you have like, for instance, this low and then price will run the low by a few dollars and then bounce back up. So um, people that try and like, for instance, sell the breakout, they, they see this is the low and then they have stop orders below this and they will like a stock market order that will basically sell as soon as it goes below the low because they'll think this is the breakout. And so um, biggest tip maybe that I can give you is, is this is an awful, in my opinion, it's an awful, awful tactic in in cryptocurrency trading. The, the likelihood is, is so much higher that that you take the first low and, and it's a, it will do something like this where it will take the liquidity and, and bounce back. The likelihood of trading breakouts successfully on Bitcoin is, is extremely, extremely low. There's so many swing failure patterns. But, um, so do you think there's yeah, a in, reason for this? I, in, in my opinion, it kind of is because I'll be honest with you that, that swing failure patterns actually used to work really well for me in, in 18, 19, beginning of 20. Swing failure patterns were really, really, really good. But then they become really, really popular. So you start to see like loads of YouTube videos about how, what swing failure pattern is, like how to trade it. And then honestly from there, they become um, really bad in, in the sense of this. So for example, we have here, so that one that we just were looking at, you had that swing failure pattern of the low, okay? Uh, I'm trying to find it. So back here, you have the swing failure of the low, okay? So people that will market short this with the breakout, trying to get the breakout, they'll have learned what a swing failure is. So then they'll see this and maybe they'll get into an action here and they'll think, right, that's a swing failure of the low. This is bullish. It's going to break up. That, that's what, the, that's what the, the theory is. Swing failure patterns of the low are bullish. Swing failure patterns of the high are bearish. So what I've recognized is that this has become too well known. And so this swing failure is... Obviously, it's really context dependent. So I, I'll always stress this is massively context dependent. But here, for example, you see how it, if, if, you're, if you're very well, if you're very well defined at taking profits, then naturally, yeah, you could have traded this um, maybe along from the swing failure. But nevertheless, what I wanted to go, but there's something else really. From here, you get the swing failure pattern. But instead of many people that would be understanding this as base concept would be thinking, right, that's really bullish. We're going to go back up to the highs. What it will in fact do is something more like this when you take out your fibs. Okay, you see how it does a swing fire. And this this was actually not a planned <laughs> example. But here we, we funny enough, we, we took the low. To work out. <laughs> yeah. But we took, put, took the low. And, and it, for instance, here, it comes up to the 618 Fibonacci. And all it does is make a lower high and then it breaks down. So, for example, people that would see this swing failure of the lowest really bullish, they would then buy thinking, right, here's our bullish swing failure pattern. And then all it does is put in a low high and, and, and goes down further. And you'll have seen many examples on the, the – I can't find the examples offhand. But in, the, in this run-up, you would have seen, for instance, like here, there's just a random example that I can show. Um, here you have this swing failure of this high. Okay, so you come up, you swing failure to high. People will think this is really bearish. And they'll short expecting the lows, but then all it does is it makes a higher low, grinds and breaks through. So in my opinion, the swing failure patterns are not that they're good to trade, but also you have to be a little bit of contrarian view because if there's so obvious patterns like this, um, the way that I I believe in trading is if something's really obvious, it never it's really unlikely that it works. Um, I, I could go down a rabbit hole, but I mean, <laughs> just something really simple, really, something really simple as an ascending triangle. Okay. So imagine that you see this on the Bitcoin chart. Okay. So you see something like this on a descending triangle. Let's just go with a descending triangle. So you have something like this. Okay. Everybody would see this and they'd be like, right, descending triangle. This is really bearish. This is going to break down. So the way that I would generally be looking to trade this is something like this. So essentially, you you get the the breakdown, which everybody would be expecting, and then everybody market shorts. You trap the shorts, and then you kind of flush them. And this is how Bitcoin works, in my opinion. It 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 craves liquidity, and it it kind of just. 
almost like wrecks the majority of the traders, so to speak. <laughs> so whenever there's an obvious pattern, and you, you'll see it as just, just, just really, really obvious. Whenever I see a, a really obvious pattern, especially if it's just staring you in the face, I, I, I truly believe it's really unlikely to work out. Obviously, there are times when it will work out. There's no 100% guarantees magic formula, but the way that I view it is that brings us on to order flow, really. So before before we get into that, I do just want to say a yeah. quick thing on these patterns because you know yeah. I talk to a lot of people, <laughs> and you know everyone kind of learns these basic patterns early on in their trading career. Uh, and, yeah. I, and I think a lot of people say, oh, these patterns work because so many people look to trade these patterns. Uh, but you're actually <laughs> yeah. bringing up an interesting point that, you know, hasn't really crossed my mind too often. I don't know if it's crossed my audience mind, but, you know, if a lot of people know that these trades are going to play out or think that they're going to play out, it gives the other side of the trade or the people on the other side of the trade the opportunity to know that, hey, we got a lot of people thinking that this is going to play out. We send it the other direction and it causes a lot yeah. of problems. That that that's one of my that's probably one of my main strategies. So just be that 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 is how I view the market. So the market is is not your friend. Like if you go in my my humble opinion that if you if you go and read a trading book, and there's obviously millions of trading books out there, but my, my opinion is if you go to a trading book, you study ten trading books and you go to trade off the theory that you've learned from trading books such such as pattern, you know, the, the, the obvious patterns, you know, things like this. And then you go to trade Bitcoin. Um, my, my opinion is that it's going to not, you, you're not going to likely be profitable because they, 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 just, they just really, really did, just don't seem to work. You will have success. I'm not saying that they're all going to fail, but uh, in the way that I, I don't know, it's hard to say, but the way and, that I view it is, is a lot of them are just built for liquidity. For, I was going to say, you, do you think that this is because that, you know, this is a less liquid market. Some of the bigger players have more influence and they can move price a little bit more or. So what I've noticed is, is uh, I, I kind of would say no, because of the fact if you trade altcoins and I swing trade altcoins. So these, these patterns on altcoins actually work really well. You, you see a triangle and actually it's probably going to work out. The, the altcoins are really different than Bitcoin, I feel. Uh, so altcoins, especially the smaller caps, mid caps, you know, they they they, they respect patterns pretty well, and you, you can you can trade altcoins. But but Bitcoin, uh, I feel is 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 opposite, where the, the obvious patterns form, and you have to think that there's market makers in this money. They they have the money to form these patterns. So for example, if if you see a head and shoulders on the chart, if you have the money to move the, the, the market how essentially you want, you can print a head and shoulders that is pretty obvious to the to the people, and you have to think. Obviously, yeah, this this is going to take millions, but people people obviously have it. So, um, you know, if, if you can form a head and shoulders on the chart, which then becomes very obvious, well, guess what? If you form a head and shoulders pattern, which is obviously bearish pattern, and then you break the neckline. So let me explain this visually. So just in case people don't understand. So you have like a head, like a left shoulder, a head and then a right shoulder. And this is a really, really bearish pattern where you have this like horizontal support. And people would say, as soon as you break this neckline, it's really bearish. And you would look for from the high to the low, extend that, and that's the target. And so when you print this pattern on the chart, and I'll tell you that there, this is an awful pattern to trade on Bitcoin. Uh, so people would short this breakdown, really, expecting expecting this low. But the way that I would trade this is I'd actually be looking for longs as we broke down. And really the confirmation for me is maybe I'd take an initial long if there was some market structure, but then I would go heavily long as soon as we reclaimed it like this, because then you get everybody trying to short the breakout and essentially loads of trap traders. You've built the liquidity. Uh, you know, let's say you form this pattern to only to fill a long. Well, to fill a really massive long position, you need a lot of short positions. So how do you get a lot of short positions? You build a bearish pattern. So then everybody sh market shorts into your limit orders at market, at, you know, going into a long. So it's really easy to fill a big, big position when you have these such obvious bearish charts because people are like programmed or taught that this is, you know, this is a head and shoulders pattern. This is a bearish pattern. So it's it's a massive liquidity provider if you want to fill big positions. And that that that's kind of like, yeah, big part of my trading that I would say that these obvious patterns are really um, not good to trade uh, because, yeah, the way I don't know, yeah, they just don't trade very well. I, the one that I trade, I uh, got an example. Um, where was it? Uh, da, 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 da. I can't remember where it was offhand. I traded a really nice one where we had a head and shoulders around here. 
can't think where it was now. It might have been this one, yeah. So we had this on like the 15 minute, and this is just a quick example I'll give you. And this was way back in, so this was way back in May the 4th. It's not that long ago, I suppose. But we had this really obvious uh, kind of looking head and shoulders where, yeah, you had the um, the left shoulder here, you had kind of the head, and then here, uh, and actually that can't have been the example. I can't remember where the example was now. <laughs> um, I literally can't remember where it was. But yeah. it broke the neckline. The, 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 and the then... same, the same, yeah. The, yeah, basically it broke the neckline and it was a really, it was essentially a really big fake out. I can't remember where it was now. But the same, the same thing applies really to where, uh, you know, whenever you see the, these obvious patterns, the, the, the theory is the same, that they, it's, in my opinion, unlikely to play out. Um, yeah, that is, yeah, that's, that's simply, I could try and find it, but. No, no, sure we, don't, we don't, we don't need to go into it. We can just yeah. move on. Yeah, but cool. uh, so, you know, we talk about chart patterns. Uh, and then, you know, you previously you had talked about order flow, fib levels, uh, and kind of using all of these in confluence with each other. Uh, so I, my assumption and what I should be telling my audience is that you shouldn't just be trading these one-off chart patterns because of reasons like this, where people can kind of paint them and then counter trade it, uh, based off of what they assume everyone's going to be doing or what the right thing to do with this specific chart pattern is. Yeah. So, yeah. That, that, yeah, that's, that's essentially it. We were headed towards order flow. I've done two episodes on it. I still cannot understand order <laughs> flow properly. So I'm going to struggle through these next couple questions. Uh, so maybe I'm just going to let you run. Uh, but <laughs> can cool. we talk about how order flow plays into your trading? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've, I've just seen the head and shoulders. I'll, I'll really quickly show you this one and then we'll go straight on to order flow. Okay. So really quickly, this was the head and shoulders here. There was kind of the left shoulder. There was the head. There was the right shoulder. There was the neckline. Everyone was wanting to short. You fake through the neckline and then, you you know, uh, it, it moves sideways for a bit. Obviously, overall breaking up. But if you were trying to short the breakdown of the left shoulder, the head, the right shoulder, anyone that tried to short the breakdown because this is a bearish pattern that that, that, that was the fake I was I was looking a bit too in the future there we go um, there's yeah, that, that neckline that's, that that's gets broken and then immediately yep. back up because that everyone's looking at that they're saying you know that's a head and shoulders we're going down especially because it was at, at the at the top at of the high trend. yeah yep so it was a really really obvious obvious pattern and so in my opinion that was a liquidity run for for higher prices and, and you know, high prices happen, but yeah. Mo the, sorry, that would have bugged me if I if I couldn't remember that. <laughs> no, I appreciate so. <laughs> it. Because a lot of the times, a lot of the people who come on, they can't find what they're looking for on the charts, and I'm always just like, "Don't worry about it. Like, it's okay." But it, it's nice that you were able to go back and really quickly find it for <laughs> anyone who is watching this on YouTube. Cool. Right. Yeah. So let's go into order flow then. So, as I was saying, order flow is like a massive, um, really massive part of my trading because what I like about order flow is is this isn't a um, system per se it doesn't give buy or sell signals it, it it's giving you data so you, you cannot lie you cannot make this up it's it's like a, a, for instance example between uh, order flow and, and channels or order flow and trend lines like you draw a trend line some people would have the trend line like this some people would have the trend line from the closes some people have it from the wicks you know there's a hundred different ways that you can do the analysis essentially on the chart isn't there but order flow it's set in stone you, you get data you get numbers and and then from there you can make your own decisions so maybe we you know you give 10 traders this information they use it in 10 different ways but nevertheless we're, we're working off of 100 percent exactly what we have and I, and I feel it's re like respected this isn't some sort of like magic you know when you, if you study all the fly i believe everyone studies it in the same way so um Basically, what we're looking at here, though, is... I was going to ask, um, what are we actually looking at here? <laughs> Every time so, I see these, it just, I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> so this is, um, I've got this set up in a few different templates, but we'll just start on this standard one. So this is uh, essentially uh, looking at candles, where you look at your standard candle like this, okay? And we look at this candle and we say to ourselves, okay, this is a nice green candle, but what does it actually mean? how much volume was there in this candle was it was there actually more buying at the bottom of the candle was there more buying at the top of the candle in the middle of the candle was there positive positive delta negative delta you know so it's kind of like a a taking out the microscope you know and, and looking inside of the candle that's essentially what this is we're we're getting a candlestick and we're 
magnifying it and we're actually seeing what's happened inside this candle and this is extremely like valuable information for example people will look at a hammer candle which is obviously a candle with a, a long lower wick and they'll say okay this this is a bullish bearish candle whatever but that is kind of irrelevant because yeah great you have a long lower wick on a candle let's say but where's the volume in that candle was the volume at the low of the wick was the volume at the high of the candle was the was the volume at the open at the close this is crucial information and this is why again like you go to a trading book and you read a hammer candles bullish and then you go to buy a hammer candle but if you have no idea of the context of why you've got a hammer candle and on top of that you have no idea of the the volume of where the volume is within that candle it's just it's kind of just pl trading blind i would say so this is essentially like how we are looking into the candles so we could simply see here if we look at like volume and then we zoom into the candle well here we can now start to see where the volume is coming in so this is a one hour chart and we can see in in the top of this candle there's 390 593,000 uh, contracts bought so this is a, a total of buy and sells and the point of control of this candle was uh, 5.1 million market buys and sells so now just from a light overview of this candle we know where the majority of the volume was within this candle we can say that mm, yeah, there was quite heavy volume at the top to be honest but uh, the majority of the volume was in the middle of the candle okay you can see there's a you know it's really obvious there's a lot of volume at the middle of the candle so then if the if the majority of the volume is actually in the middle of the candle rather than the top of the candle let's say when you read for example one strategy of this behind this would be if you lose the level and you come back and retest it well you'd expect it to reject where the majority of the volume was for example if you bought this if you bought in this candle expecting a breakout but then price rejects well then you're in a long position but you're underwater so you've 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 Maybe you bought, you saw a little bit of profits, and then you instantly saw it turn to losses. And you're thinking, oh my, I'd like to get out of this position break even. <laughs> so many people would be thinking that. So what we're going to say is when price revisits this high volume candle, a lot of people are going to close their positions break even, and we'll expect the retest before down in price against this is giving us another support resistance. And you can see that this is where it rejects. Doesn't reject from the higher the candle, doesn't reject from the lower the candle but it rejects where the most volume is more or less again we can see this is the value area so the value area to the point of control we, we we essentially lose that level so you can see how we lose the level we come back up and retest on this this candle the, the point of control to slash value area high we retest spend a little more sideways retest it once more um before well that's what that's where we are right now but um you know that, that that's kind of what we're looking at in terms of footprint charts so this is a footprint chart so then how do we move this a step forwards well then we can start to look at things like um the statistics <laughs> the statistics essentially so what we are seeing here in in the current the current candle that we've got now and i would say that i'm not always using this on a one hour chart but i feel it might be a little bit too i don't know it might be a bit confusing but basically everybody's used to looking at candles because on trading view and I, I believe trading view is the most most commonly used platform for cryptocurrency traders I believe and so. yeah so this is what everybody uses and if, if you I, I don't actually use this for like trading but for charting i have to use it because if i if i start i, li I like to use sierra charts and trading technologies if i if i post a chart of that on twitter then nobody has any nobody has ideas so the followers are kind of just you know they're so used to this you have to you know you just have to kind of share these charts i suppose <laughs> <laughs> so um Everybody's used to trading trading view, but you're 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 limited to only being able to obviously you've got different chart types like Renko and point and figure charts. So these are quite useful, but they're also really limited. They're yeah, they have point and figure charts, but you cannot change enough settings, so it's a kind of pointless. So um Yeah, I remember talking to someone about because they trade Renko and they were just saying trading view is yeah. terrible for it. Yeah. You can't get down into lower time frames. <laughs> Uh, yeah it's it's, it's all awesome. can't go very far back it's just a mess <laughs> it, it's kind of like so personally I've, I've 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 had to correct trading view on on a few things before where they've actually released tools that are incorrect so uh, uh, one of them was the, the fibonacci speed fan they they released an incorrect version and i saw that they inc released it incorrect i posted it on twitter everybody made the, everyone made a ticket and then one week later they corrected it but where i'm going with this is that trading view i believe is is, is pretty basic Obviously, it's enough to trade. Yeah. But if you're, if we're honest, like if you're a professional trader, you can't really just use trading view. There's, there's, 
you know, you, you can't, you know, it's just, you need you know, much more sophisticated. Yeah, <laughs> basically, uh, you know, it's, it's fine for intermediate beginners. It's, it's absolutely fine to be fair, but I mean, there, there's things they could work on. So um, one thing that everyone's used to is your standard time frames. Okay. Your one hour, your four hour things that you would actually find more useful though, as a, as a sculpt trader would be like changing into this, in, into things like reversal charts, point of figure charts, or, or changing it to like a Delta chart. So essentially this means that you, you're only going to get a new candle built for example on a 10 million uh, volume chart we're only going to get a new candle when there's 10 million volume so rather than a minute passing and it making a new candle this this is going to remove the noise from us where we're only getting new new candles when certain um you know there's actually a, a parameter so, so to speak yeah yeah, it's a little bit, a little bit helpful i i couldn't even tell you how you would trade that like personally i I know Renko is kind of similar where the, the next bar is only built when you move a certain amount up or down. This is volume based. Uh, so I'm sure there are full trading strategy strategies built solely around this. As, as, yeah, there, there are definitely, but um, I mean, what, what we'd be looking at then. So to bring it back into a bit, a little bit more in layman's terms, I suppose, what, what we'd be looking at here. I appreciate then, that. Cause I was about to ask <laughs> you to do exactly that. <laughs> So, so really simply, what what we'll be looking at here then is, so let's think to ourselves, right? We're we're let's say when we're back here, are we going to be buying the low of the channel? Are we going to be, you know, shorting the here? You lose the channel and you retest it, so we can make a decision. Are we going to be shorting the retest when we come down here? Are we going to long the retest? Like, so to determine, it rather than just trading like a robot, buy high, sell low, buy high, sell low of the range, we can make a little bit of a more of an informed decision are we actually going to buy this low again are we going to sell this high again so this is what i'd be looking at as we approach these levels so really simply i'd be looking at on a high time frame well not high time frame i suppose but more of a bigger overview perspective really simply what we'd be looking at is something like this so this isn't a great example because you're not in a proper range here, but essentially let's, let's say this was our low of the range. Okay. And, and here we can see some statistics. We can see the volume of the candle. So how much volume was in the overall candle. We can then see the Delta, which is basically the, the, um, sells versus the buys. So what we'd look at just to make this really obvious is bid ask. So we can see here, there was uh, 1.3 million buys and 1.4 million sells. So that would give us a difference of 100,000 contracts. Okay, so that would obviously give you negative 100,000 contracts. Um, but the, the delta is that of, that of the overall candle, basically. So the buys minus the sells, that gives you your delta. And then the cumulative volume delta is essentially the running total of your delta. So here you see uh, 140 million plus 833,000 contracts is 141 million minus 1.5 million is 140 million. So the cumulative volume delta is adding up our, our delta. It's, um, it really quickly, it's crazy here because I just had on Young Talopa, another British dude, and that he was <laughs> the first person to ever talk about CVD on the podcast. I had never even heard of it. I So helpful. Yeah, and this is two episodes ago. And now you're on talking about the exact same thing. It's funny that after a year and a half, almost two years of doing the podcast, I'm just hearing about this for the first time now, a week or two ago, and then again I, today. I, I think this the reasons did, – did he have a history in the stock market as well? well he did, yeah. So that was yeah, the thing. Think, that was his yeah, original exactly. start, and then he moved over. Yeah, so this is the thing, in my opinion, that the 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 level of cryptocurrency traders, generally speaking, and I'm not hating on it, but but generally speaking, the level low. of cryptocurrency trade, yeah, it's really low. <laughs> to be fair. Yeah, no, but, I'm I'm gonna be honest. I think all everyone knows this. Kind of the younger crowd, a little bit more inexperienced. This is their first market that they're trading in, uh, yeah. and it's really nice to have some of you guys who are much more well versed and a little bit more experienced come in, uh, start trading, and then teach kind of this newer, younger generation. Yeah, so it's, it's kind of like that. Yeah, so in stock market, you know, everybody's using this. Whereas cryptocurrency, it's 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 actually finding a bit of a base now. And the reasons for, the reasons why it's becoming more popular is because you're finally getting platforms that are doing this. Like exocharts didn't exist a year ago. So you know, where would you go for this? Well, Sierra charts, or well, Sierra charts, or or trading technologies. Trading technologies is is like one one thousand four hundred dollars a month software. So people are genuinely are not going to be wanting to. You know, it's quite expensive, if we're being honest, for for a, a program to look at Delta. And so 
now there's more options available it's becoming more commonly you know it's more widely available and so this is only a positive for the space because this is really crucial to how you trade you know and the, the more available it becomes the more competitive pricing etc is and you know the more people that can can use this and that's only adv advantageous really so um yeah, that's that's maybe why there's more people using it at the moment. I'm not 100%. sure. Hundred percent. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt you there, but let, let's uh, let's bring it back. Yeah. So <laughs> Sorry, I keep so interrupting you just to right. kind of slow things down a little bit. That's um, right. But no, I, I, I get a bit I get it. a bit carried away to be honest. I do get I, a bit carried you away. You know, sometimes I want to just let people run and talk, and this is the kind of thing where I do actually want to just kind of let you run because it's a little bit of a foreign concept to me. I've done a couple episodes, like I was saying, but it's definitely not my bread and butter. So I do just kind of want to let you run on this one. No worries. That's that's fine, mate. Um, but yeah, basically what we're seeing here is then the volume, the delta and the CVD. So so what we could be saying to ourselves on a very simplistic level or is if we go to the low of the range, are we actually seeing people buying this? OK, so when we when we approach the lows, we'd, we would want to see delta increasing and then actually buying and defending the lows. And then you would naturally expect when you go back up to the highs, selling to increase and people selling to go back to the fair value so it's kind of like the auction process isn't it so when you go to the highs this is considered too expensive and people are going to sell up here there's going to be more supply than there is demand and you bring it back to fair value the middle when it goes low this is discounted people are not selling at a discount they are viewing this as an opportunity to buy comes back up to the fair value the middle of the range you can see how this is going to form your channel of the highs the lows and the midpoint that's how you get these channels and so when we when we think of this, what we are thinking is this is going to stay range bound and it's more likely to stay range bound than not. And so when we're approaching the lows, we want to see evidence that people are buying the lows and evidence people are selling the highs. So how would we know to not buy the low, for example? Well, let's say we approach the low and nobody steps in and buys and you're starting to see things like this, like negative, like really heavy negative delta picking up at the lows and no buying interest. Well, this is telling us or more likely than not, it's going to break the lows because we're not seeing what we would normally see. And you can get more in depth on this. For example, looking at the rotations from the high to the lows, so the speed, the angle, the descent, you can go a bit more in depth, but nevertheless, simply, you're just looking, are people buying at the low? Are people selling at the low? You would expect people to heavily buy at the lows, but if people are not heavily buying at the lows, uh, there's no point in trying to you know essentially you could say there's no point in trying to buy it trade tr wait wait for people to be interested in buying because if you approach the low and no one's going to buy it well guess what you're probably going to go through it so that's essentially what we'd be looking for you have your your overall range so this this overall is obviously a bigger range of high of the range low of the range middle of the range so when we approach the low of the range are people buying are people selling when we approach the highs are people buying are people selling and this is a classic one when, for instance, when we approach the highs. So I done a really nice trade where we were shorting around 9,900, 9,800. And this was quite contrarian because a lot, of, a lot of people after we took this low, so again, swing failure pattern, people get really uh, bearish for, or really bullish, for example, thinking this is gonna be the breakout of took the lows, took the liquidity, but you approach the highs. And so my thought process is always gonna be this at first, you know, we're approaching the higher range where many people are gonna expect a breakout. We always just got to think it's more likely to stay range bound and not. So then this was a really nice short, obviously from the highs, we obviously come back down to lows, but nevertheless, like what we're looking at here is, is our channel, our range. When we see, you know, you could see this from the footprint charts that when you come up to the highs and there's, there's, mm, there's no buying interest. Okay. There's no buying interest. And the supply was really evident. The supply was massively evident up here. Okay. So then you're approaching the highs and when there's, there's more supply than there is demand or, you know, what what you know you've just got to think there's there's more likely that you break down there's no or you're, at least you're not going to break up you would have thought and then obviously you break to the lows you come back down and this is another thing you you broke down to the low and uh you know think back a week at this low how, how many people do you think would have been buying this low and and i can almost guarantee that the majority of people when they're looking at this they're not going to be thinking on buying the load. The majority of people act on emotions. So this is the thing. You you go up really quick here to this high. And, and the emotions that are in the trade, obviously, it's now in hindsight, it's really obvious. 
clearly it was a bad buy because you go down but i was trading this and i was shorting this and the emotions behind it are everybody's really euphoric thinking yeah. here we go <laughs> you know this is it we're going to break up and then the exact flip on the way down this is it you know we're, we're breaking we're down for, yeah and then the way you got to think is really simply trade the chart trade the range do not be thinking this is going to break out especially if something approaches a level quickly in my opinion that's it's an even worse time but to buy but nevertheless like you approach the level really quickly this is everybody's at peak euphoria and then you approach the lows really quickly everybody's at peak bearishness i suppose yeah and then um you know this was an, yeah exactly and this was like another one that you approach the lows uh, and then here you actually have uh, CVD divergences. So what this is essentially showing us is people were really aggressively selling the lows. Okay, so people are really aggressively selling the lows, expecting breakouts or like breakdown essentially. And so this traps a lot of shorters. And then essentially you get these like short squeezes. And and Bitcoin's really renowned for these short squeezes. And so it just catches people offside. How how can you not get caught offside? By like really simply easier said than done. Trading the chart. Yeah. Yeah, okay so just shorting the highs buying the lows okay stop trying to buy breakouts stop trying to short breakdowns yeah. until it's confirmed and so, how do you get a confirmation of volume for you yeah so this this is exactly what i wanted to kind of break down in just simplest terms uh, you mentioned oh this looked very obvious in hindsight well yeah i mean like i have a lot of people who come on where i'm kind of iffy on what they're saying i'm like cool you have your trend line or your level and you said you're trading it this way. Oh, you traded the breakout on this one and then you it respected this resistance, you know, this other time. So it kind of seems like they're talking about a lot of hindsight trading. You have pretty clearly defined rules here. You say you trade the range until you're seeing that it's not uh, not going to be respected, but you take that a step further and say, all right, well, we do some volume analysis. We look at the buys and sells at the time that we are grinding along this higher low and that's how i'm actually able to make the decision you know so many people they just say oh well i long the breakout or you know i shorted resistance well it's why how were you able to yeah. figure out that you wanted to short the resistance versus trying to long the breakout and yeah uh, that volume that you were kind of using and the footprint chart that you're talking about and brought up that's kind of how you take that to the next level and how you can see that these levels are going to be respected or we're going to see a breakout yeah so i, I have a pretty nice example for you if it's if it's all right yes um, please am i allowed to share my twitter yeah 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 go okay for cool it. so i have a we're nice example a link, for you I'll, I'll put a link to your twitter in the description hopefully send some people your way because i've cool, i've no, very much cool. enjoyed this episode you've been you know very clean and concise with your points it's very easy to follow it's rare that i get these kind of episodes on these more complex topics so i i hope people go and seek you out <laughs> after this episode uh that's that's cool mate but i mean what, what all basically i want to show you here is because this was i'm pretty proud of the call to be honest like this was what i was looking at when we were approaching these loads so as i was saying you approach the lows everybody's really bearish you approach the highs everybody's really bullish we're, we're trading the range we're trading um, the range until it breaks essentially but then how we, can we move this one step further and this is where harmonics come into play so this is what i was looking at uh back back in the back in the back in the time essentially that i was expecting this was like kind of you know posted in advance i was expecting the lows to be come down one more time and this is based off of fibonacci so you can see here i was expecting the six six this is this is why i like kind of use so i was expecting the lows before the increase of the highs down to the lows and the way that this traded out was <laughs> is kind of amazing. We got the move down to the low. And then obviously we were looking back up again, kind of like range bound, range bound trading from the low to the high to the low. So we originally were thinking what the reason why I was thinking that this was not the low and there was one more move to the downside was because we had this was actually open interest statistics. So you can see the rises on price on really poor open interest, which is basically just showing us how many people are actually opening new positions. Is this shorts covering? Is this longs covering or is it new business? And if it's not new business, then it's more than likely uh, dead cat bounce sort of thing. So this was why I was thinking that we would make one more new low. And because of this, also, which is pretty funny, from this low to this high on Fibonacci, this was a 618 retracement and it bounced off to 618. And also the 618 is fairly well known. A lot of people know about the 618 and trade off of it. So my my opinion was that we would actually fake out from this low and take that low before the bounce because too many people were buying the 618. So I was thinking we'll take the low 
and then we'll re-increase in price and then we'll come back down. And the way that this traded out was we did, that was a dead cat bounce. We took the low and then I was, I was buying down, uh, my entry was $8,707 and I was looking for the highs to come back up to around 9,500, 9,600. And obviously that's how we topped out currently. Our top was literally 9,630. So the three steps of this market was drop, increase, drop. We got the drop, then we got the increase. And now obviously we're thinking to ourselves, is this going to now drop? This is that harmonic here. So we got the drop increase. And now we've got to say to ourselves, right, is this more likely to actually get another, another run up here? Or is this the high? And now this is time to drop. In my opinion, I'm a little bit, um, two minds sort of thing, two minds. Um, I see that the, the opportunity here, I feel there's a massive opportunity to, to hit 9,800 because of the fact, um, we got a weekend currently, yeah. So the weekend is is really low volume. So what this essentially just means, you know, you, you can move the market on a lot less volume. So there's the opportunity to to run the this current high because there are going to be people that would have have shorted Friday night, Saturday, you know, Friday night, Saturday, and have their stops above the high. So essentially, you have the opportunity here to run the stops and actually run into a bigger resistance level because this this isn't a massive resistance, nine thousand six hundred. To, to be honest with you, it's not it's not big. So we have the, the opportunity here to run stops and then get the move to around nine eight hundred. And here you actually have bigger resistances, and then you stop everybody out, and then you also get a CME gap. So the CME is closed at the moment. So we could we could see the potential of another move up, and that would leave your harmonic looking like this, which is still totally valid. Um, so you'd have the harmonic looking like this, stop everybody out, have the CME gap open, gives much more selling pressure, especially because overall, I'll show you what this looks like overall. Um, this looks like overall. I think it's on this one, uh, a distribution schematic. And again, this is like not set in stone, 100%, anything like this. But, um, you know, if you look at the volume, okay, everything here, you have, obviously have your buying climax. You then increase in price on less volume. The only significant volume from this point after the upthrust, uh, upthrust is heavy sell volume, sign of weakness, rise in price, declining volume, sell off again, heavy supply. Okay, you come back down to the lows, heavy supply, but then you get this increase in price what's happening the increase in prices on declining volume so this is bearish this is undeniably bearish and uh, and this is what i really want to emphasize though that this is undeniably bearish and I, and I and i and i struggle to see how anyone can say that this is reaccumulation but what that does not mean is that we have to go down this is undeniably a a, a bearish range in terms of volume but that does, a, that does never mean that it has to go down. So this can definitely still go up in price. But if we're looking at purely to the technicals, then, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of staring us in the face. The, the, the highest, the, you know. <laughs> I just want to say the chart can be bearish and it can still go up is what yeah. I think is Yeah, and, and, and important. I guess it's kind of like what was I was saying at the start, you know, like you print a head and shoulders, which is bearish, but you can still go up. So and this is the thing in technical analysis. It's all probabilities. There's, there's never a guarantee. And and I, and I think that that's what's, I don't know, that like, uh, yeah, it's just obviously it's all, it's all about probabilities. So you, you can never, ever, ever be 100%. And, and that's obviously why risk management is is so, so, so important. You know, we can be shorting these levels, but, you know, yeah, you can push up. You know, you can be shorting these highs, but, you know, you can push up. So what do you do? You use a stop loss. You know, that's the forefront of your trading strategy, stop loss. You should be thinking about before you enter a trade, how much am I going to lose if I'm wrong? Rather than thinking how much am I going to make? Think, think to yourself first, how much am I going to lose on this trade if I'm wrong? And then when you understand that every single trade that you can take has a probability of losing, I think you're only going to be taking the highest probability trades. When you when you suddenly, you know, you have that light bulb, you know, yeah, absolutely, I can lose every single trade that I take. So I'm not going to take poor trades. In my opinion, too many people lose money in trading because they do not have the patience they do not have the patience to wait for this low. They see the rebound here, and guess what they're buying? They don't have the patience to wait for time. If you think of it in time, okay, so we can look at this. If this impulse, okay, so if this impulse here has taken a, a, a time from its low to the high of, of eight days, what's the likelihood that the, the retracement, okay, the retracement of that impulse is only gonna take three days? It's, it's pretty unlikely, if we're honest, because the corrections generally are, are, are longer at the very least than their impulses. So it's like the patience required, again, and a lot of people lose money in trading because they, they simply do not have the patience to wait. Um, yeah, yeah, 
simply that that kind of boils down to quite a lot patience is a massive thing you've got to be prepared to wait for these drops okay now i've had a rise yeah this, this is obviously looking like a pretty nice short position I, I did originally take a short here but now i'm thinking to myself you know there's absolutely the possibility of, of, of moving up one more step here just because it's the volume low weekend volume it's 100 percent possible we get this this increase so then how could you how could you kind of let's say you're in no position and you, you're not in a long you're not in a short well in my opinion it's, it's not really a good long because think think to yourself if, if this is a heavy region of resistance is it a good idea to long here with a target of here and arguably a stop loss here well not really because you're 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 going to win one dollar to lose one dollar it's, it's not really something you're going to go for because of the context as well is pretty bearish so you could say to yourself okay i'll i'll long if price gets above this level with a close maybe and i'll long maybe up to here and you then you have a more defined stop of this you could say to yourself okay i'll long when the price when the chart's showing me strength so maybe you actually do something like this reject and then you reclaim this level and then you're saying to yourself oh wow price got above this resistance um if it's got above this resistance it, it might be strong well then you can be looking at things like order flow is it actually strong or is it not strong but um you know, I, keep, that's uh, I keep wanting to bring it back. You know, you talk about <laughs> breaking res breaking resistance. Yes, this is a good thing. You can look to take a long. You can feel comfortable in your long. But then you personally, and what I think a lot of other people should be doing, is looking at the actual buy and sell volume after the yes. fact to see what is happening. Yes. Yeah, so th this is the main thing, and 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 this is like the next level of trading, I suppose, that, that you cannot always look at everything black and white. So you cannot say when resistance is broken, it's bullish. When the support is broken, it's bearish. You have to actually go one step ahead of that. And then this is why this is so crucial information, because are people actually buying the breakout? Are they actually selling the break of the highs? And that's what gives you a swing failure pattern. So I'm not even going to say that it's it's complicated. You know, it's, it's not that complicated, to be honest with you. It's, it's, it's just... Um, I guess many people just don't even know about it. I suppose yeah. like if you know about it, then you would you would use it. <laughs> I think people so, think it's more complex than it is, and they don't want to take the time to actually learn it and yeah. understand it. Uh, I think a lot of people, especially the guys that have come on or people that I see on Twitter that are just talking about you know trading based off these candle ch candlestick charts, uh, yeah. I, I think it gets a little dicey and it seems a little bit like hindsight trading. Uh, yeah. But when you have the footprint chart up, you can see what's actually going on in the moment and make those trades. It's not like a, oh, hey, we broke resistance and then two candlesticks later, I longed because I confirmed that there was a breakout. And then, you know, next candle, it drops back down below resistance. You just get chopped up and it really doesn't seem like the best trading strategy to me it seems like a lot no. of hindsight trading uh you know this this is the thing so the thing of yeah the, obviously i mean i try and remove myself personally i i remove myself from twitter as much as i can i, I personally have um, no interest in in anyone else does on twitter to be honest with you but i do have people that the majority of people um i don't know how to say this in in a good way um uh, yeah, I'm probably be best at not saying. <laughs> be rude. I, I mean, unless you're trying to save save some face here, I could say it. Most people are garbage traders or something. I don't know where you're going <laughs> with it. But you know, I, su I suppose like it's it's kind of like this that in 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 Twitter there is um, there is like the big accounts have their friends. Let's just say like this: the big the big accounts are all friends of each other, so to speak. So if you um, if if i don't know how to say this really well but um we can just move on if we want to dance around. yeah that's just, yeah i guess just move on <laughs> no yeah, yeah yeah so i actually as you were talking i did have a question that kind of came to mind because you're looking at a lot of different things here uh you talked about you know the actual candlestick charts then you've got your support and resistance lines drawn and then you're looking at uh order flow on the footprint charts uh, you've got this harmonic pulled up. I don't really know too much about harmonics. I've seen people making fun of it a lot. I have never once looked into it. So I have, I don't even want to try to speak on that. But back to the question <laughs> was, is there ever this kind of analysis paralysis or you getting too bogged down with this, these kind of indicators and what you're looking at uh, causing you to just never take a trade? So um, that I can understand. So um so I, I do run like a educational mentorship group. And so a lot of people will come to me originally and, you know, I'll give them some 
you know, a lessons essentially. But then because I will teach like an overview of of, of all the tools I use, then some people a hundred percent, you know, will get analysis paralysis. Personally, I, I I don't, but I know that definitely it's it's you know undeniably you you likely will as you're a beginner but then like with everything's every like with then you know if you want to be the best athlete in the world you know it takes time and dedication and practice you know you want to be you know one of the best traders and obviously it's going to take time practice so what that means is you know yes there are so many indicators and x y and z tools you know there's a lot of tools out there but what you need to do is take these things and build your own strategy so if, if you do try and follow anyone else you are going to fail because you do need to understand what you're doing and the only way to understand what you're doing is by all means, you know, take a service and learn from someone to learn the tools, but don't expect, you know, j just something like I would say here that, you know, I offer an educational service, let's say, but that does not mean I can make you into profitable trader. That That's dependent on the, the person, you know. So what that means is, <clears throat> you know, I can teach you tools, but then you, you're going to need to make your own strategies um, because how I trade, how the, the time that I have in the day is different than the time you have in the day. The, my emotions are controlled differently than your emotions. How I view a set might be different than yourself. But where I'm going with this is absolutely, yes, you can get analysis paralysis. So how do you combat analysis paralysis by having all these tools available and actually understanding what to do with them? Well, the only way that you can not have analysis paralysis is experience. Experience is, is crucial in anything that you want to do. You cannot expect to become a consistent and profitable trader in less than five years. And this is my biggest gripe, I guess, with Twitter, that, that the people have not been trading more than two, three years. And I cannot fathom, well, they're obviously you can be skilled and get into something in like a year. And, and you know, there are obviously people that can do that. But nevertheless, on in, in average probabilities, it's unusual for someone to be at a high level of anything in life in, in a short amount of time. You know, it does take time and experience in, in anything that you want to be good at. You cannot expect it to happen overnight. So how, how do you get rid of analysis paralysis? You have to put time and dedication. And I would never say to anyone that trading is, I, I guess I will say this sometimes, I say trading is so easy, but I, I say trading is so easy because I've been doing it a long time. You know, this is like the back of my hand, but absolutely, if you're coming into this as, an, as a newbie, do not expect to make money in cryptocurrency trading uh, maybe within the first one, two, three years. You know, it's unrealistic. You, you have to have realistic expectations. So I know there's going to be people interested in, in learning to trade. Maybe you've already started to learn to trade. Maybe you're dabbling in and out with a bit of trading, a bit of investing, whatever you're doing. Um, you just got to really have realistic expectations. Do not have the mindset that you're going to become a millionaire overnight. Okay, that's that's not going to happen. Maybe you can make a million pounds overnight, but guess what? If if you've made a million pounds overnight and you're a newer trader, I can guarantee you're going to be losing that money in the weeks to come, because people, you know, it's, it, I would just I would say that's likely people in the 2017 bull run. You know, I have a load, load, and load of people that come to me that you know they made millions in in 2017, but in 2018 they lost it all. So you know that happens in trading, and so if you do not know what you're doing, you're going to lose money. Secondly, if you actually under, if you have all the tools, but you don't know how to actually incorporate that into a trading strategy, you're probably still going to lose money. And then thirdly, if you don't understand context, then you're going to lose money. And why is context so important? Well, let's say, for example, we approach a level bullishly, but then the context behind this trade is that you're in an overall bear market. Well, then that what might look like a really bullish pattern is actually bearish because of the context of the overall picture. So, you know, these three things like come together and... Yeah, I mean, yeah, going That's... back to your question of it, does analysis <laughs> paralysis happen? Yeah, absolutely. Analysis paralysis happens to, to everybody. So how do you combat that? Time and experience is the yeah. only thing. I'm just going really... to add to this one is that, you know, you pull up any of these charting softwares or sites and there's a million and one different indicators and yeah. things you can click on and look at and chart types. And I think just starting from square one, building slowly, like you said, time in the market is going to be very beneficial. And you can yep. start with just looking at candlestick charts. Start looking at, you know, some simple support and resistance and build off of these strategies. You know, start from square one where some of the best traders who are out there today have started and slowly build your strategy over time. Uh, it's not going to be something that, you know, happens immediately there are these kids or these guys or 
women, whoever it is, sorry, who I, I, I got to include everybody, but, uh, they're, they're these guys who pick it up, you know, like that. And they're one in a million, I would say, you know, everyone kind of yeah. comes together on Twitter. A lot of people are LARPing a lot of people, you know, the best of the best do get pushed to the top as well very quickly. So it, it's kind of hard to judge it based off of Twitter when you're, when you realize that, you know, there are so many failed traders on Twitter. There's so many failed traders who never even made it to Twitter. Uh, so, you know, some of these guys who make it to the top very quickly, it could be that they are doing extremely well. These guys are the outliers, uh, and it's going to take more time and skill and, you know, just building slowly to get to the point that they got to very quickly. Yeah. So I appreciate that. Uh, we have been on the call for, I would say, an hour or so. So I do want to start. <laughs> try to, yeah, I know. I think it's actually been <laughs> closer to an hour 20, maybe an hour, hour 15. Um, wow. So do you just want to kind of start to wrap it up? We've talked yeah, about a cool. lot today. I do really appreciate you sitting down, uh, but I do like to ask two final questions. You know, I ask these, ask these to everyone who comes on the show. You know, what are you most excited for in the coming 12 months? And then your biggest tip for one, the new traders out there. And then maybe for some of the guys who want to start exploring, you know, CVD, order flow, um, that sort of thing. Can we give two separate tips for those guys? Cool. So, um, so you're going to have to tell me the first question again. <laughs> <laughs> what what you're most excited for in the coming hey, 12 months? What am I most excited for? Uh, I'm most excited for in the coming 12 months, uh, probably a combination of a few things, really. I'm, I'm excited to finally get out of lockdown <laughs> and right. go traveling again. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm going crazy um, here. <laughs> but I, I guess from a, from a business perspective, I should mention something about the company because um so i guess that in the next 12 months i'm excited for the launch of, of chart champions website that's going to be great putting a lot of money and time on building it so be good to finally have that done um so i am looking forward for that to be finally done to be honest with you and um is there a like preliminary pre preliminary site that's already up and running that people so, can yeah, check out now or we we already have a fully functioning website um but we're building like a version two of it got we it a lot, yeah so do you want just... people going and checking that out now or do you want them to kind of wait for this revamp uh and version 2.0 before they head on over and check it out uh, by, by all means if, if you're if you're interested in what what i kind of do here then you know be all, be my guest and you can come over to the website now uh obviously all i'd say is all we are offering all we're off, offering is an educational service you know you're you know people people you know especially on twitter you know this is the thing why i, I stopped replying to everybody on twitter because um people hate paid groups on twitter so um i i originally didn't have a a like an educational group and then i released one and you know people ha people hate so hard on twitter for having for having an educational group and um you know there's all these reasons like oh if you actually made money trading you wouldn't have a paid group um you know that's probably number one that people argue with me about they also say daniel you're a scammer you don't know what you're doing you know i've heard it all i've heard it i'm a scammer i'm a x y and z you know every name under the book i've been called since i had <laughs> since i had this group so why do i run this group honestly simply i have an educational service you're under no obligation to even come across you know there's no skin off my back if you want to if you're interested in learning about my what i do then you know you can come across to chartchampions.com and, and read um if not then you know there's no worries <laughs> at all. I do free educational videos as well on YouTube. So um, that's what I'd say to this. And then secondly, um, where was I going with this? Um, <laughs> yeah, basically the reason why I created Chart Champions is because personally I have no worries in the world in terms of money. But the reason why I want to give back is because the way that I view it is I want to create some form of a legacy, something that I can actually say, yeah, I'm proud of this. Firstly, I'm, I'm in my 20s, so I'm, I'm pretty young. I I, it, I can't just spend my whole life doing nothing, essentially. I want a, I'm, not, I'm not a guy that just would want to do nothing. So I, I have created this to essentially try, try and create some sort of legacy, something that I can be proud of, something that I can be like, you know what? I, I receive messages from people that say, Daniel, you, you've, you've changed my life. And for me, that is, that's, an amazing feeling I'm, I'm really really powerful that someone can say to you daniel i have i've joined your group essentially and you know i've learned what i'm doing and i paid off my daughter's college fund 
from money that I've made from cryptocurrency trading. Like, thank you so much. And that is, that's an amazing, amazing feeling. So to have like this legacy is, that's why I kind of created a group. And obviously in life, nothing's free. However much I would maybe want to do a free group, then, you know, this is, this is the real world. This is, this is business. You know, there's nothing in, nothing in life of quality is, is free really. Um, so yeah, that, that's where I'm going with that. But, um, hey, man, you know, I, I, yeah. I completely <laughs> understand. You don't got to justify any of this. I actually run or just recently started running uh, a paid Amazon group. We've, uh, we teach people kind of how to get their Amazon businesses up and running. It's kind of yeah. my thing outside of crypto. And as soon yeah. as we talked about paid options, you know, people start people going crazy. It, yeah. You're a scammer. You can't yeah. make money doing it yourself. <laughs> it's like, dude, like one, it's extra money. Fuck you. Like if you're yeah, not fuck, here to make yeah. extra money, what are you doing here? To be honest. Exactly, man. And on top of that too, you know, we, when we were doing the group for free, it really was crazy to just be like, to have people reach out and say, this has completely changed my mindset on the way kind of making money is possible. I've added an extra income stream or revenue stream to my other ones. It, it really does feel good. It feels really yeah, fucking good. Um, it does. It, it would just like make me, the two other admin, very, very stoked to hear these things. Uh, we chat, we have our own chat and we talk about how, you know, truly awesome it is that people are reaching out saying, hey, you've changed kind of my life. I've made X amount of dollars in this amount of time. Uh, so there's a couple of reasons that people start these paid groups. Fuck anybody who wants to say <laughs> that I'm a scammer, you're a scammer. You know, yeah. there's no obligation to pay. You said you put exactly. out free content. I'm on here talking to you on a podcast. This is my time going out for free to people. So exactly. I, I think you pay your dues. You, you give out the free content. And for anyone who wants more, there's this extra exactly. paid content, exactly. paid group. Uh, yeah. But enough about paid groups because I'm now one of those paid group runners <laughs> and I'll argue it till my face is blue. Um, those tips. Can we talk about tips? I, we, so we've tips, talked about a yeah. lot already. You know, some big, big tips have already been thrown <laughs> out. But I always just like to end it with the biggest tips so that when people close YouTube or stop listening to the podcast, they have something to go do immediately. So uh, two tips, I, well, a few tips then that I'd give you. First, first tip, I suppose, is, um, I, I mean, although although I've kind of bashed on trading books, I, I do think, you know, naturally it's a good place to start. So I'm not going to say it's not. So, you know, to get in, to get your feet wet, you know, absolutely go go out and read a few trading books it's it's, it's not it's it's, it's not going to hurt, hurt you in any way so um i would say a few tips a few trading books one that i recommend i actually i prefer to recommend trading books based on more psychological aspects so um really good book that i would say recommend which is not really going to teach you technical analysis but it's about trading is is market market wizards um jack can't remember his name now jack something a market with if you just google market wizards it'll come up uh that that's a brilliant book that i recommend and it's like interviews with top traders so it's it's a brilliant book to get you started in the mi mindset mark douglas is an, also another guy a uh, trader that has a, a, a quite a few books anything mark douglas is 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 gold so um i'd recommend yeah start 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 getting your feet wet with, with maybe the psychological aspects because if i'm honest the majority of people fell because of their emotions you know trading Obviously, yeah, it's, it's a little bit hard, but it's, it's not overly hard when you kind of know what you're doing. But even if you know what you're doing, if, if you're emotionally attached to trades, then you, you're probably going to fail. So you, you need to work out how to get rid of those emotions. So study psychology is kind of a part of doing this. Um, so that's the first thing I would say. And then secondly, the second, maybe two and a half, 2.5 second tip that I would give is, is, is honestly, and this kind of would fit for myself as well. So I'm hurting myself, like unfollow everybody on Twitter, literally just unfollow unfollow anybody that may give you i want to say this in the in the best way possible that's beneficial maybe i say it like this do not take into consideration anybody's opinion on a trade the only way that you're going to improve is trading your own setup and you cannot do that by having um you know for instance you log on to twitter in the morning and let's, let's say you follow 10 people and it, these 10 people are likely going to have 10 different setups how, how is this going to benefit you I mean, what you need to do is is block Twitter. In my opinion, this is just my advice that I would give. That I I think you're best off removing um, 
any biases that you may have from Twitter, just do not, in, instead of being the first thing you do in the morning, check, check, check Twitter. If you're wanting to learn to trade, this is the first thing that you should do in the morning is load up your chart, do your technical analysis, do your journal and work out what you are going to do. Well, maybe, yeah, you can log on to Twitter then later in the day and see, oh, maybe if I'd looked at this guy, I would have, I'd have seen this. But you want to learn. And the only way you're going to do that is actually by trying to do this yourself. So that that's the, the, the tip that I would kind of recommend is, is 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 don't focus what on anyone else is doing. Focus on yourself, yeah. and that's the only way that you're going to improve. Well, it one, doesn't matter if you uh, know. Sorry, sorry to butt <laughs> in. I just think this this that's one's cool. tough because I've had a lot of traders come on who have said kind of similar to what you're saying. You know, they wake up in the morning, they're not checking Twitter, they are looking at the charts, they are forming their plan for the day. They're either taking a trade or waiting to take a trade. And then they start their day, they go onto Twitter, they do the bullshit, yada, yada, yada. Uh, and yeah. so they say it doesn't influence them. They've also said that it has very negatively influenced them. When they're in a trade, they start seeing other people's setups and it starts to affect their thoughts. So what they've said is they kind of completely removed themselves, not by unfollowing everybody or anything like that, just kind of once my trade is made, I do not touch it until my stop or my take profit is hit. doesn't matter what I see on Twitter. And they said that that's something that's very hard to wrestle with. Yeah. On the yeah, other, I, I, well, on the other I, hand, I, though, I really quick, case, sorry, yeah. um, no, is, is that, you know, the, there's some people who have joined these crazy trading groups, these amazing trading groups, or they've seen people on Twitter. They follow a very small number of people. And they've said that being able to learn how other people view the market and seeing their viewpoints has positively changed their trading strategies and it has helped them grow as a trader. So it's this very fine line where if it yeah. influences you a little bit too much, it can be negative, but to get other people's perspectives and stay so, in the trade that you're in, it does kind of help for the next time yeah. around. Like, Oh, Hey, I remember this person talked about this specific setup when I was looking yeah. at it a different way. Now we're seeing it again. I can take the trade in a proper way or maybe be on the right side of trade. Yeah. So very fine line there. Uh, I, <laughs> I hate to I say guess. it, but I think some people are going to torch you for the for the zero followers. Um, I've seen it on people. I've, people I've, I've about, already had it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen people <laughs> I'm a scammer, talking about I'm Dante. a scammer for that as well, apparently. <laughs> uh, yeah, that that one blows my mind. But yeah, you. I've seen people talking about Dante, uh, just saying, oh, well, what's the point of having a Twitter um, provide information on the other side of that coin? Um, yeah. But okay, so that was 2.5. Sorry, I did need to butt in there because I don't want no, no, to just fine. jump off to it and be like, no, I can't use it anymore. <laughs> yeah, no, I guess I didn't really mean it for that. I guess at the end of the day, the main reason why I'd say it is, is this, that, um, you know, you can get, for instance, I post a winning trade. That doesn't mean you're going to win the trades. So when you're comparing yourselves directly or thinking, I, I just know it's it, it happens in life. You know, if, if if you see someone winning a trade or maybe, maybe for example, you if I, for instance, I post something like this on Twitter, you know, let's say I posted this and I'm, I'm longing now, I've got my stop here and then it, it goes up to here and then maybe I, the price does this and then it goes like this. And I say, I want, uh, for me, this would be a winning trade because I would have took profits maybe at the high and this was my final take profit was never hit. And then it got stopped on the remainder. And then I'd be like, yeah, I won this trade. And then someone else would be like, how do you win the trade? It never hit your, <laughs> it never hit your take profit. So like, if you, if you don't understand the mechanics of trading and how, you know, well, I'm looking like here, you know, I could have a bias that's maybe bullish at the start of the day, price moves up. I see signs of a rejection. I get out of the trade early. So if you don't know how to manage to trade, I don't know where I'm going with this really. I guess I'll just wrap it up really quickly that, you know, yes, absolutely. <laughs> Twitter is helpful if you, if you know what you do with it. Can There's be. obviously good Can and bad in the world. Very detrimental. And, yeah. 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 <laughs> so take, take everything go, yeah. you see with a grain of salt, be cautious exactly. on there, form your own yeah. opinions first, get that 100%. base, that trading strategy, and then maybe look to add stuff to your trading arsenal. Um, and then really quick for those kind of more experienced traders who are starting to look at order flow They've got their footprint charts up. Um, you know what? What's your biggest tip for those guys? Um, if well, it's was... different than than the kind of not letting other traders influence yeah. them. So maybe what I'd say is, if, if if maybe you're at this intermediate level where you are, you you feel you have a good grasp. But I think if you're at if you're at footprint level type charts, you you probably are in an immediate trader. So so how do you go from intermediate to advanced in trading? Well, I would say maybe if you're at an intermediate trade at an immediate, immediate stage, you're, you're winning maybe 
40 50 percent of your trades which is which is good let's be honest like 40 50 percent win rate is good so if you're at this stage and then you want to go the next level to maybe 60 percent win rate how can you do this well if you are for example at a level where you're just starting with with footprints i think the, the key thing and this is what is still hard for intermediate traders is is truly understanding that intuition and um intuition or reading context correctly is is honestly how you go from intermediate to advanced and how do you get intuition in trading how do you how do you get feel for the charts let's say um you know i trade the stock market for eight years i come across the cryptocurrency when i first start trading cryptocurrency it doesn't mean that you're going to know how to trade bitcoin because guess what like for instance, these patterns that work in the stock market do not work in cryptocurrency very well. And so how do you know that? Well, obviously, it takes time to actually trade cryptocurrency. So once you've traded, you know, let's say you, you feel you're in an intermediate level, but you've only been trading like a year, you're getting your feet where you're, you're at the level you're doing order flow, really to get the intuition and the gut quote unquote gut feeling of what's going to happen at each price but that obviously comes with time and experience so all i would say is is that never never give up just if you feel that you're at like a, a stepping stone where you're just getting you're either just getting started you're at the intermediate level where you, you've got a 40 50 percent win rate you, you can see yourself advancing but then you also feel like oh there's so much to go so much more to go i guess what i'd say is is um i guess my tip for you guys or girls would be um keep going it's it's not as hard as many many might want to make it seem trading is not that hard i guess most likely if you're if you're at this intermediate stage and you're losing a lot of your trades my uh, personal opinion is it's it's likely maybe saying psychologically maybe you're emotionally attached to trades so that's likely what your problem might be it might not actually be you're struggling with the technicals if, if you know what you're doing here it might just be that you're actually maybe you've got too much money on each of your trades and and this is why you're losing trades because you're moving stop losses up too quickly or you're you're, you're too you're, you're looking for too unrealistic targets I, you know it's hard for me to just give a simple answer i suppose <laughs> but i guess maybe it's psychologically and, and and many people overlook the emotional slash psychological aspect of trading but for me like this is a massive massive part of trading the psychological things behind trading are massive so if you can you know you could be the best technical analysis in the world but if you are then very emotional then because let me tell you this there's a difference between doing technical analysis and posting a chart on Twitter and actually making money trading because yeah, you can do beautiful charts, but then if you, if you kind of uh, don't, you know, if you get scared putting on a hundred grand on a trade, well, guess what? You're, you're going to lose it because you're going to be like, oh, I'll put this money on. But then if you start shaking or you start thinking, Oh my God, I can't lose this money. Or you just have these thoughts. You cannot, you know, many people cannot sleep. People will go, will start trading and they cannot sleep. And because they're so worried about what's going on on the charts, why is that? Well, in my opinion, because I, I went through this when I started trading, like I also couldn't sleep when I first started trading. Why was that? I was too emotionally attached to the trades. I was trading with too much money for where I was at my beginning stages of my career. I was trading with too much money. I was too obsessed with it. And that's unhealthy. That That's what you need to conquer. So I think intermediates are likely at that place where I think an intermediate trader, if you've asked most, are probably at a stage where they they have trouble sleeping. They're so obsessed with the charts. And this is this is healthy and it's also unhealthy. And how do you combat that? Really simply know why this is happening. And likely maybe you're trading with too much money. Maybe, maybe you're placing too much risk. I don't know. Like this was what it was for me originally. And then how do you combat that? Well, with time, once you can actually prove to yourself that you've built an account, you've actually seen these lovely gains on your account and then this is then giving you the confidence to know i can take this trade i have the probabilities in my favor i know over time i win money i can enter this trade i can not care less if i get stopped out i acknowledge losses are normal in trading i can take a loss and be unfazed because that's part of the game to take losses as it is just to take wins and i'll go to sleep tonight and i'll wake up with money or i'll lose money it doesn't make any difference to me because over time i know i'm more likely to win and i am going to lose so that's why i say intermediate tip um don't focus on the money focus on the process and the money comes naturally forget yeah. about the money and you know that that's how you make money <laughs> yeah no i think the two biggest things there are like the the technicals aren't that hard you can get that stuff down relatively quickly within the first year you can kind of develop the strategy yeah. 
a lot of people yeah. start to plateau there as they either start to scale in with more money and then they become more emotional. So I think you hit it pretty spot on there is just the longer you are in the market, the more you will start to learn and then you'll start to understand your emotions a lot better. So to focus less on the technicals after you've kind of got those down, start looking for new technicals or new indicators that are going to improve your trading. Look within, kind yeah. of look at yourself, figure out what's going on mentally because like you're saying and like what a lot of traders on this show have said is that trading's a mental game and if you're not Definitely. there mentally and you don't have control over your own emotions you're not going to be successful you can understand the technicals again like you were saying you can be a great technical analysis you can put up these beautiful charts make winning trades on paper but as soon as you start throwing big boy money around that's when you start you seeing lose. issues yeah that hundred percent. You know, I have I have people in my group that you know they say it themselves that they're comfortable trading with five hundred dollars, but then when they go to five thousand, they they struggle. And so you know, I say to them, you know, this is where you have to block it out. You know, yeah, you're trading with five hundred dollars, you you do really well. They they increase their size, they start fading. And I say to them, you know, it's the exact same technical analysis that you're doing. So why are you failing? It's it's clearly your emotions behind these trades. And then when they really acknowledge it, it is, they start losing with the bigger money because they do things like moving up their stop loss too quick because they don't want to take the losses. So what the, the advice I give is, 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 is really don't think about the money. Although it's so easy to say, I know this, yeah. but, you know, don't <laughs> think about the money. It's impossible not to think about. <laughs> yeah. Especially as someone it, who's newer. Yeah, it, it is difficult. And I, I acknowledge that because I, I went through this all myself. You know, I went through the steps of, of also feeling, you know, you know, this is so much money for me, like, you know, whatever, like, but, you know, it, over time, all I can say is from my experience, over time, it, it gets easier, better. Yeah. And yeah, no, perfect. I, yeah. I, uh, I think that is a beautiful way to wrap up the episode. We have talked about so much. Again, I want to <laughs> thank you for it. It's I, I have no problems getting into these longer episodes because you are very clear and concise about all of this. We started with just the basic candlestick chart, a couple support and li resistance lines, uh, and then we got into this much deeper conversation, brought in more indicators. Kind of, it, it was a nice progress of how traders progress, I would say. Uh, with that yeah. very intermediate or beginner stuff, moving into the more intermediate and then ending with some tips on how to kind of take it to that next level. So I appreciate yeah. it. Before we go, is there anything else that you want my audience to know? I guess, um, uh, no, there's, there's not really anything else. I suppose I'll just say, um, you know, all I'd say is around, around my name, um, thank you for having me. Uh, it's, it's been a pleasure to to share uh, some of the things I know, I would say for myself, I'm always learning. I would never, you know, I don't think I'm an expert. You know, there's there's always stuff even for me, everyone else. You know, we're always improving. We're always moving forwards. Um, so never, never think you're at the top, especially in trading. You've got to stay level headed. And um, yeah, I hope you have a brilliant 2020. And hopefully, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. That's all kind of yeah. falling apart. We got we got riots going on. The virus <laughs> yeah, still that, running away a bit, but. Uh, <laughs> Hopefully things can turn around. I, I'm positive that they will at some I'm point sure or another. Uh, but yeah. again, thank you so much. Really appreciate you taking the time. No worries at all. It was, it's, it's been a pleasure. And, and thank you. Thank you, everybody, so much. I hope you've enjoyed. All right. Perfect. Going to end the or stop the recording really quick. Cool. Give me one second. That's going to be a long one to render. <laughs> yeah, that one's going <laughs> to... So I've started to get into the hour and a half long episodes, uh, especially with some of the traders because there's a lot to talk about. So I don't have an issue with it. Going to try cool. to get it out on Monday. Been kind of running That's behind because cool. I got this this Discord group that I was talking to you about. That Amazon That's fine. Group. But um, should be out Monday, if not Tuesday. Uh, is there anything else that you want me to include? I usually include... A uh, link to the person's Twitter because that's generally where I find everyone that I have conversations with. It's either yeah. Twitter or sometimes email. Uh, but I usually link the Twitter. Is there anything else that you want me to link? The website, uh, I can link that as well. Is there anything else? Yeah, no, I just guess just, yeah, the website and, and my Twitter. And yeah, that, that's it really. All right, perfect. And yeah, should be should be getting it uploaded Monday. We'll probably just throw together. I usually do it where I throw together some sort of tweet saying, hey, this episode out with this person. So tag you in it. 
Um, yeah. So should should be good to go on uh, on Monday. What's that? Is that uploaded to YouTube? YouTube and then all the podcasting platforms like Apple, cool. Spotify, Google, yada yada yada. Very nice. Yeah, I'm sure people will, yeah will be interested in. Uh, it's funny because today I had loads of people in my group asking me like <laughs> asking for like when it was out and stuff. So they'll be they'll be looking forward to it. <laughs> oh, perfect. Yeah, I would appreciate it if you want to kind of share it with anyone that you care to share it with. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, that's cool. I will do. Cool, cool. If there's anything else that comes to mind that you want added into the description. Uh, just shoot me a message. I am going to be really fucking busy with DMs, but if I see your avatar, your name pop up, I'll try to be a little bit more on it. Uh, if anything else comes up. No, no worries, mate. Yeah, that was, it was, it was, yeah, cool to meet you. Cause I, yeah, I'll be online in in the Twitter space. I, I, I'm really disconnected. So I try, I don't try and not, not interact with as many people as possible, but you know, it's nice to find some genuine people. (laughs) Yeah. It's nice to to speak to you. (laughs) Honestly, it was a great episode. It was, it was a little bit funny because like as soon as I, I said, oh, hey, I'm having these people on, these people reached out when I told all my followers to go harass people. Uh, and one guy was like, oh, this guy seems like a scammer. And I was like, oh, yeah. we'll see. We'll I get see it how the the Yeah, I know. It's, like, <laughs> it's, it's funny because, you know, that one of the guys, I'm not sure if you had him on, but that uh, Jack Sparrow guy. I haven't, no. Oh, uh, right, no. So he's he's one of the guys that think I'm a scammer. And it's re- it's hilarious because I, I called him out for incorrect technical analysis. Like he'd just done period incorrect technical analysis. And then from there, he started to hate me. And then this guy called Dev Chart, I don't know if you know him. I do know him a little bit more. I don't know if so, we had a conversation. So he's like, I, I, I like live in their heads because they literally tweet about me uh quite often and they're always like he's a scammer apparently i make accounts to say to myself that i'm good like i've heard so many stories but yeah i, I saw that the guy tagged that guy as well and i was like oh I hate that guy. <laughs> you're like oh, but, fuck. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but nah I, I i just ignore it anymore i don't care anything uh, you know it's, yeah. it's just okay, my, my plan was like all right let's have him on let's see what the conversation is like sometimes i've just pulled episodes i've been like you know what this one's not gonna work but Honestly, yeah. that was probably one of the most straightforward trading episodes I've done. Uh, even just compared to the very last episode I did, I was like, yeah, this seems kind of like hindsight trading. Like, I don't know if I want this episode going out. This was yeah. pretty fucking easy to follow and very understandable. Um, so I was like completely blown away that people are on Twitter saying, you know, oh, hey, scammer, <laughs> uh, the, scammer. The, 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 I think that people don't like me firstly because I am pretty bold where I will say things like, you know, I've said in the past, like I'm the best trader. People, I, and I know that's really bad. I, I know I shouldn't be egotistical, but, you know, I, I, I have done the difference between like me and other traders that I've actually been on live stream and I grew like two to 20 Bitcoin. So like a times 10 on live stream and so i've actually proved that i'm doing this and that was over nine months and so i've actually proved it whereas you go on twitter people will post screenshots which can just be faked you, you cannot fake a live streaming and so people hate it because i say that i'm one of the best but the thing is i say this and i actually can prove it and so i rub it in people's faces and um and i know that acquires hate but I just like, I just find it quite funny. But then I stopped interacting and yeah, then it kind of died down. But nevertheless, the, the hate and the scammers, the, the comments have followed. But, you know, Dude, I just, I ignore I, it now. I, you know? I, I get that one, especially just because like I was saying with that group that we launched, like our, it was the first month that we had done it free. Members made, I think like 1.3 million in revenue in the first month off their Amazon store. And yeah. people were like, Oh, you're charging for this, you fucking <laughs> scammer. I was like, dude, we just made people like obviously that's revenue, not net profit. We talked to the group, got net profit. It was still like three hundred grand or some shit for the first month. And that's uh, crazy, yeah. Pe- people are like, Oh, you're the biggest fucking scammer charging, <laughs> you know, money for this. What's wrong with you? I thought this was goodness of your heart. It's like <laughs> what? Like how old are you? What world do you live in where where making I know, I know, people money thing, and like, charging them for it is a problem? Exactly. Like this is the thing, like in life, there's there's obviously there's opportunity. There, there's a space for like, t- like education has a, has a space. So you know why why would you why would I not charge for my, for my time? You exactly. know my time is pretty valuable. So why would I why would I give it for free? <laughs> yeah. You know you know you know there's that's just yeah, anyone just life, who I targets suppose. for anything on crypto Twitter or Twitter in general is a scammer. Yeah. 
yeah it's, it's crazy because i saw that you were going to do an in did you do an interview with flood uh so he said we're going to push it out to i think middle of the month end of the month uh because he just went on peter so he wants to give that a little cooling off period oh, fair enough yeah so because... we'll have him on soon I, I know that he's a big hate of I, I'd never heard of him in my life I, I I'd never heard of him in my life until last week and then someone tagged me in one of his comments I'm not sure if you saw the thread uh, but, maybe um, I don't know no but yeah that, it got quite a lot of interactions because um he like called me out for being a scammer and um then I and then he like replied with this like 10 million screenshot and then I replied with like me making like 14 Bitcoin in a trade and then mine was a video and then I was like, okay, it's just like, you know, I, I'm not sure, I don't know Flood, but all I can say is if you post a screenshot of 14 million profit unrealized p and I mean, it's a little bit unrealistic. Why, why can he not post a video of it? Yeah. That's what I, that's what I ask. Anyone can fake a screenshot, but you can't fake someone recording on an iPhone, you know, refreshing the page. Yeah. yeah, a, yeah. A, 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 a video on BitMEX. So, you know, and then he also like ref does referral links all the time. Like, oh, if you think you're so good, counter trade me, post his referral link. I was like, if you make money, you don't chill a referral link. Uh, I mean, I don't know, man. I don't it, know. It, I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm cool with the ref links, similar to the fact that I'm cool with paid groups. It's like, yeah, money is money. We're all here to make yeah, money. Suppose, if you're yeah. making $14 million in a trade and you want to throw up a ref link and make another couple hundred thousand monthly or yearly, I by all fair, means fair enough, go for but, it you know yeah. but yeah i don't know i've I've had people that i respect because i don't really know him too well i've been following him for a while but i've had people i respect who are closer with him who say that like all his shit's legit so i'm like i'm not gonna yeah. argue it i guess i i i'd never i i have no idea if i'm honest but like, i think that's the biggest thing with crypto twitter that there is no transparency it's so, so it is very easy to, to fake it yeah so, it's, it's very you know. tough like i have people on some people are like that dude's a fucking scammer other people are like oh he's the greatest trader ever i'm sure it's going to be very similar with this episode you know, you're gonna have people saying this is a great episode other people saying dude's an absolute scammer so yeah it's just <laughs> without, so hard. without a doubt that that like i can tell you like i do youtube videos every 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 week and there there are instant dislikes on some of my videos like just instant dislikes so likely this one will get some and you know, it's the same with everyone you know people have people have everyone's got haters, enemies but, yeah people are you know guaranteed there will be someone saying it's a scammer but <laughs> you know who cares <laughs> yeah I'm not, I'm not worried about it yeah but no, that's, that's, that's cool day mate I really appreciate you sitting down uh, again. If there's anything that does come up, um, just let me know. I can get it added in there. Uh, but I got to run. I got some stuff to take. Yeah, care same, today, mate. So. No, that's cool. I I I have a good day it, and stay safe out there. Yeah, same to you. <laughs> cool, then. Yeah, cheers. Thanks for having me on again. All right, have a good one. All right, cheers. Bye.